Good day, everyone, and welcome to this important presentation. It's fundamentals of accounting again. Today we are looking at the trial balance. We've looked at the seven books of original entry, went further to look at the ledger, and today we can discuss the trial balance. Look at the errors that cannot affect the trial balance. We'll go further to look at key guiding points when preparing the trial balance. We will conclude by a critical demonstration on how the trial balance is prepared. Hope you enjoy the lesson. Don't forget to like the page for further uh, postings that uh, will be made in the near future. The trial balance, what is it? We looked at uh, the ledger, three types, and we see the accounts involved in all these three types of the ledger and how the books are balanced off. And today we can look at the trial balance and the trial balance, we can simply define it as the collection of balances extracted from the ledger. Meaning all the balances extracted from the ledger will make the trial balance. So bookkeepers and accountants normally use this report to consolidate all the accounts into one document and you always use the double entry. So bookkeepers typically scan the year end trial balance for posting errors to ensure that the proper accounts were debited and credited where required. Where is this done in the journal entries? So internal accountants can also use the trial balance and actually they start from the trial balance. Uh, government agencies like Zambia Revenue Authority may also use the trial balance to compute the tax which the organization, the company, the firm is supposed to pay. So it's a very critical document and uh, we need to uh, understand it uh, clearly. Now, the trial balance must always balance, meaning the debit entries must be equal to, or must equal the credit entries. Now, there are certain errors that can be committed by junior accountants that cannot affect the trial balance, meaning the trial balance can balance. However, there are several other errors done and the trial balance will not capture them. Certain errors can be captured by the trial balance. If it fails to balance, just know that some errors are committed somewhere and go to the journals, go to the ledger, and you're going to trace those errors, correct them, and you see the trial balance balancing. Now, here we are talking about errors that cannot affect or that cannot prevent the trial balance from balancing. What are these errors? So we've got error of omission, commission principle, compensation, a complete reverse of entries and original uh, entry. Now let's critically look at these with examples. Error of omission, what is it? We are talking about uh, a, a, a transaction that is completely omitted, for example. A sale of 59,000 worth of goods to EG George has been completely omitted from the books, meaning there'll be no debit entry and there'll be no credit entry, meaning with the rest of the entries made already, the trial balance still balances. Do not affect when you completely omit one transaction. Why can accountants omit transactions completely? Some, it's human error. At times, it's deliberate, where you feel you can siphon some money, this important payment which has come, don't want the company to know, 
and you decide to hide. How? By not recording it anywhere. You completely omit it. Then you pocket the whole lump of or the whole lump sum of money in, uh, 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 and uh, just forget about it. But afterwards, uh, maybe through auditing and several other accounting requirements, that transaction can be traced. Then they can say, oh, we forgot. We omitted one important transaction and you need to record it. And that money will be, will be required at some point. The other error is error of commission. An example is where there is a purchase of, for example, 44,000 kwacha worth of goods from C. Simmons on 4th September is completely entered in an error in C. Simpsons. Instead of Simmons, it's entered in Simpsons. No, C. Simmons, C. Simpsons, these are similar and you may make a mistake. So purchases are going to debit the purchases in the purchases account. Then you go, instead of going to C. Simmons, you go, you go to C. Simpsons and the credit. The two sides will balance the debit entries versus credit entries will still balance. However, an error is committed. Instead of crediting C. Simmons, you credit C. Simpsons. It's an error. However, the trial balance will go on and balance because the total debit entries will be equal to total credit entries. The third error we can look at is error of principle. Error of principle, what is it? The, uh, an example is where we've purchased some machine with 200,000 kwacha. And since the machine has been purchased, it's coming in, therefore, debit the receiver, they're going to debit uh, this amount, 200,000. However, there is another account which needs to be uh, credited. So in this case, you debit to the purchases account instead of machinery account. No, you've purchased the machine. This machine is not meant for sale. It's meant to be used in the business. If you buy something for the purpose of using it in the business, that's a long-term asset and it has to be entered in the uh, machinery account, not in the purchases account. The purchases account is an account where we record goods bought for sale, for resale. So it's an error. This error is called error of principle. Instead of entering in this account, you go and enter in the wrong account. So yes, you're going to debit and there will be credit entry, meaning the debit versus credit, so the two entries, the two sides will balance. However, there is an error inside. You entered in the wrong account. And if you enter in the wrong account, that error is called error of principle. Let's go to the fourth error. This is the error of compensation, compensating error. An example is in the cash book, the amount of cash sales transferred to the sales account was overstated by, let's say, 20,000 kwacha. And the amount transferred to the wages account was also overstated by the same amount, 12,000 kwacha. Now, compensation, okay, meaning this side is compensated by another side, okay? So the two sides will still balance. However, an error has been committed. Which error? Okay, cash sales, you cannot uh, uh, overstate the amount indicated. So when you overstate or understate, instead of 50,000 kwacha, it says 70, you overstate by 20, or you understate by 20, instead of 50, you say 30,000, and both sides are still balanced. However, there is an error. Error of regional entry. This is whereby, uh, for example, the sale of 38,000 uh, kwacha to S smells was entered in the books as 
28,000 kwacha. You know, the, there is eight, eight, three, two. So you fail to, uh, you know, maybe you accidentally take it to say, I think 38, I saw 28. So you enter 28. It can be 35, 53. You know, those uh, numbers or digits that may sound, seem similar to you and you fail to see pro properly due to you know, various reasons and you enter them uh, erroneously like that. You commit an error which is called error of original entry, meaning from the original documents, how much was it? From the receipt, from the invoice, how much was it? Was it 89 or 98? No, the numbers, the figures may be similar and somebody may make a mistake. So if you enter 98, debit 98, credit, they'll still balance. However, in the original documents, source documents, it's 89. It's 89. So you committed an error called error of original entry. However, the two sides will balance. We go and look at another document, another uh, important error which cannot affect the trial balance. This time is uh, the error of reversal entry, complete reversal of entries. And when we say reverse, it means uh, we are uh, going backwards. An example is a payment of cash of 16,000 kwacha to M. Dixon was entered on the receipt side of the cash book in error and credited to M. Dixon account. So, reversal, you're talking about something to be debited, you credit, or something to be credited, you debit, meaning you are doing, you are reversing, you're doing the opposite. Payment of cash, you've paid cash to M. Dixon, meaning cash has gone out, credits the giver, meaning the cash account you must credit. However, you, you go and debit receipt as if you've received, you go and debit in the cash book, okay? Meaning you've done the opposite. And that error is called complete reversal of entries. The last error we can look at is transposition error. Transposition, to transpose. Normally you can transpose the figures. An example, a credit purchase from P. McLaren costing 56,000 was entered in the books as 65, 56 and 65. No, you transpose the figures you transpose the figures. So these are the errors that are found uh, when you are working on accounts documents. However, these will not affect the trial balance, will not prevent the trial balance from balancing. It's important to know when as an accountant, as you are preparing books, be accurate, be precise, and always make sure that you are sober when you are entering these. Otherwise, you can quickly send the company to liquidation or you can be fired earlier than expected. Be a great all the time. Let's now look at uh, preparation of the trial balance. Key guiding points. Key guiding points. Points to look at as you are preparing the trial balance. What are the key guiding points? Okay. So we've got uh, items to be debited, we've got items to be credited. And as an accountant, it must be clear with you which items should be debited and which items should be credited. And these few key guiding points will guide you in understanding which items should you debit and which items should you credit. So we've got assets all types of assets, be current, long-term, all these must be debited. Now, examples of assets, we've got cash, cash in hand, cash in the bank, 
all these two are debited in the trial balance. So you get them from the ledger books, come to the trial balance, debit to them. Another category of assets we've got uh, suppliers. These are uh, individuals, companies, organizations that have uh, given us some goods, purchases, okay, stock. And these goods are assets to us, they are current assets. So we are proud of them, we have received them, debit the receiver. So all the purchases must be debited. Stock must be debited, inventory must be debited. The other category of assets is called plant and equipment. These are long-term assets. We've got land, buildings, factory machines, computers, and all these uh, long-term uh, equipment that the company may have, roads, trucks, buses, vehicles, any machinery that the business may have, any equipment that you may think of. All these are long-term assets. They are bought to be used in the business. And all these are debited. So should you find them quickly, know that in the travels, these must be debited. However, there are also other accounts that you need to understand that they are also debited. What are these expenses? All categories of expenses must be debited. So we've got cost of goods, cost of sales. We bought, before we, saw, we sell the goods, we normally buy them, okay? So when we are buying, there are costs involved in the purchasing of, or in the acquisition of those goods, be it in transport, be it in a, uh, in a no, loading or floating warehouse and all those uh, expenses that you're likely to incur for you to sell the goods and make profit out of those sales, they are called expenses. And uh, you need to debit the expenses, be it in advertising, be it in communication, be it in transport, be it in insurance, be it in electricity, be it in the lighting and heating, it's part of electricity, stationary, among others, all these must be debited including all laundry costs has been debited. Now let's look at uh, other items, uh, accounts that must be credited. Number one, liabilities. The money is that we are owing other people, okay? We've got the accounts payable. We've got notes payable, all categories of loans bonds, debentures, higher purchases, name them, all these are credited in the travels. Should you fund them, know that these must be credited. Make a mistake, the trial balance will not balance. Let's look at the last category, which is owner's equity. Owner's equity, we are talking about capital, the money invested into the business by the owners, by the investors, by the shareholders, by the stockholders. So now, every money invested in the business is called capital, okay? So we credit capital. And capital may be in various forms. You may have common stock, you buy common stock. You may have preference stock and all those categories, okay? Whatever category, any owner's equity, any money coming from the owners, from the investors, from the shareholders, pumped into the business to grow the business, to expand it, to diversify, remember you need to credit. To complete the double entry, that money is it in cash, bank, whatever, so you credit, you debit the cash account debit the bank account, even as you credit the capital account. So owner's equity, credit. We also have revenues, OK? 
okay, and all the gains that the business has, you credit, profits, credit, sales, credit. If you follow these few key guiding principles, do not struggle in preparing the travels and you're going to get maximum results. Having done this, we can now go to the practical demonstration of how the trial balance is prepared. Let's look at uh, the demonstration. The question is from the list of balances extracted from the uh, ledger, prepare the trial balance. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, leasehold, improvements, and all those now. If you have the exam, you find such a question, quickly get a pen, a pencil, and indicate to each of these items. Credit, debit, credit, Sierra, debit, DR. Indicate to each of these items. Thereafter, then go draw the three column table and start entering. As simple as that. So cash, we said cash, bank, these are assets, so you debit. Accounts receivable, this money in transit coming to the business for the goods you sold on credit, so money is coming, you debit. Inventory, said, these are assets, okay? So we debit. This would improvement, we've got some property that we are renting, then you decide to make some improvements on it, be it painting, be it some renovations, rehabilitations, face improvements, so that it's attractive, meeting some modern standard uh, so that uh, you remain competitive and attractive uh, to potential customers. So you're making some improvements. So that improvement, the value of that asset will not remain the same. It's in, it will increase in value. By how much? 100,000. So it's an asset. What do you do? You debit. Accounts payable, these are liabilities, okay? And you need to pay for the goods that you got on credit. So you're going to credit. Long-term liabilities, $99,500, you credit. Common stock, it's this form of capital from the, the guiding principles that you indicated. So capital is credited. Dividends, you see this money shared by, by the shareholders from the profits made in the, uh, in the company, in the business. So they share the money, uh, and this money or profits shared is called dividends. So it's more like a withdrawal by the owners of the business, and any withdrawal is debited. Revenues, these are, are gains, and they are credited. Uh, cost of goods sold, okay? So this part of expenses, you're buying goods, transport them, load of load, warehouse payment, and all costs incurred. So for you to acquire those goods. So you spent money, money, cash, you credit it for you to have those goods. So you're going to debit. Rent expenses, and we agreed in that uh, principle or guiding uh, 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 facts on how to enter all the expenses are debited. So we've got the following expenses here, rent expenses, supplies expenses, utilities, wages, interest. At times they may not say rent expenses, they may just list them without telling you to say these are expenses. So you must know them. Some are not here, but you must know them. So now when uh, the table is drawn. How is it going to look like? Okay, this is how it will look like. This is how it will look like. So we've got uh, the first column where you put all the accounts, then the second column, debit column, and the last column, credit column. So the same list of items, then are you debiting, are you crediting? So just list them, put debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit, then add the totals. If they balance, wow, then you say, I think now everything is well. And you can even get a bottle of water and uh, take a sip. 
as we proceed to the next question. Now, once you understand these, these are some of the simple concepts that you can understand and get maximum max. And when you say maximum max, you're talking about hitting the ceiling, which is 100%. Let's try to look at the next example as we continue demonstrating. Okay, this one has got uh, a bigger list of items which continues okay, up to here. The question is prepare the trial balance. Prepare the trial balance. Okay, let's look at the items. So we've got capital, and we said capital is always credited. Trade payables, all payables are credited sales, credited retains outwards. These are goods, we bought them. Now we are retaining them. So they're going out and the credit, they give her, they are going out, so we are going to credit. Discounts, we've got discounts allowed and received. We are allowed, so it's more like an expense. So expenses are debited, so debit. Discounts received, we received some discount after buying some goods in bulk when we're given. So we've received some discounts, it's a gain. All gains are credited. Fixes and fittings, these are assets, so we debit. Depreciation, these are expenses, so we debit. Trend receivables, current assets, we debit. Inventory, okay, these are assets, we debit. Purchases, are assets, we debit. Retains, inwards, these are goods that we sold, now they are retaining due to various reasons. Maybe they are in wrong sizes, wrong colors, or about to expire, among other reasons, and the buyers are retaining them. So we are going to receive, debit the receiver, so we are debiting. Carriage outwards, okay, we transported some goods to customers and we facilitated everything. So all the expenses in cut, we call them carriage outwards. And the total amount is 4,000. So, uh, we are facilitating the going out of the goods because this sub, uh, customer bought these goods in large quantities and you want to motivate him or her so that that person continues buying from us. So it's an expense, it's an expense. So expenses are debited, good. Drawings or drawings are debited, carriage inwards, transporting the goods that we bought. Those are expenses, so we debit. Rents, rates, insurance, heating, lighting, postage, stationery, telephone, advertising, salaries and wages, budgets, all these are expenses, and all expenses are debited, good. And you move on, you go to cash in bank and cash in hand, and this, this, these two are current assets, and all assets are Debited good. We've got now five year loan from Banda. Loan falls under liabilities, and liabilities are credited good. Then we've got inventory at uh, 3rd June 2020, meaning this, this is closing inventory. After stock taking, by the end of the year, we realize some goods have remained. Closing stock, closing inventory. So those goods are counted and the total amount is 17,000. So what do you do? Do you debit credit? Yes, these are assets, but they are not part of the, the year's transaction. So they're not included in the trial balance. Instead, they appear at the bottom in some note form to be used where? When preparing the balance sheets. Now, once it's prepared, Question is or required prepare the trial balance as at 30th June 2020. 10 months are allocated. And as I indicated, your goal, your aim is to hit the ceiling, the ceiling, maximum max. So they are given on silver plate. And when it's prepared, how is it going to look like? So to be like this the title is a trial balance for who are wrongs or enterprises. For which year? For the year 20, okay? So now we've got details, debit and the credit uh, uh, column. So as I indicated, capital is credited, payable sales uh, and um, retains outwards, all these are credited. 
when this comes allowed with debit received with credit fixtures and fittings with debit these are assets depreciation these are expenses we yeah, with debits uh, trade receivables money in transit coming to the business and assets we debit inventory uh, we debit purchases we debit retains inwards they are coming so debit the receiver carriage outwards these are expenses for transporting goods so expenses are debited drawings carriage inwards all these are debited and uh, we continue rents, rates, insurance, heating and lighting, postage, stationery, telephone, advertising, salaries and wages, bad debts. All these are expenses. And all expenses are good debited. So we debit these. Then cash in hand, cash in bank. All these two are assets. And assets are debited good. Then you've got a five year loan from Bandai. Uh, all loans for under liabilities and no liabilities are credited and it's credited like that so if we are the two sides they should balance total side on the debit side four hundred sixty seven thousand four hundred totals on the credit side hundred sixty four thousand four hundred so the two sides have balanced meaning you have hit the ceiling and you have maximum max total 10. Then a not down there closing inventory. Okay, of course, this is not an item for the trial balance. It will appear where in the balance sheet. We've just discussed how the uh, trial balance is prepared. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. We'll meet next time when you look at uh, financial statements. Thank you so much and God bless you.